Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the Marvels. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, the continued uh, backlash as the movie plummets to new depths uh, for Disney. 87% 80, drop off in week two. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Not looking too good. But um, what's interesting is we actually have the actress that plays Ms. Marvel coming out and saying she doesn't pay much attention to it. Now, she's like the anti brood Larson. Like, she's she's like, I don't really pay much attention. And frankly, it's Bob Iger's problem, not I know. mine. Yes, I love it. We'll, we'll talk about it more. But I'm like, I really like this kid. <laughs> I really, really like yeah, this we, kid. Yeah, we've said that since the beginning. Like, regardless of how you feel about uh, the direction of the MCU, regardless of how you feel about the Marvels, regardless of you know, whatever uh, the Ms. Marvel show, the kid that, well, she's not a kid now. I guess she's 21, playing a teenager. But... She seems pretty solid. Like she seems like she's got a good head on her shoulders, mm -hmm. and I, I find her very likable in the interviews and stuff. I said she's got like genuine enthusiasm, but she also seems pretty base. She's not, yeah. you know, running at the mouth about politics or any of that kind of crap. Um, but uh, yeah, she basically said this is Bob Iger's problem, not mine. <laughs> I just did my job, and that was it. So if Brie Larson had done the same thing. I was thinking she's the anti Zegler. She's the anti Zegler, yeah, right? Uh, can you just like CGI Zegler out and put her in? I don't know. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants, guys. You get a woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Uh, go out to shopclownfish.com. You got a couple days yet to back Shadowbinders Volume 3 hardcover. Uh, this is the first new Shadowbinders content in 10 years. Yada, yada, yada. I'm sure you've heard it all before. You can pick up books one and two if you haven't done so already and uh, we're looking forward to continuing this story so there we go guys uh, thank you so much for the support greatly appreciated uh this is Amon Balani. i think i'm pronouncing her name correctly i hope i'm pronouncing her name correctly but uh yeah she gives a perfect answer about the marvel's bad box office uh coming from forbes um and uh, Paul Tassi said he's seen a number of great quotes from her. This is the best one when she was asked about how badly the Marvels underperformed at the box office with the lowest debut weekend of any MCU movie. She talked to Yahoo. She said, I don't want to focus on something that's not even in my control because what's the point? She says of the relentless focus on the movie's box office. That's for Bob Iger. I love it. She's tr It's true, though. I mean, she just was hired to do a job, and she had to work with what they gave her, do reshoots, whatever, with what they gave yeah. her. She just played a part. It's not her fault. It's not her. And she's and why obsess about it? She can't change it. It's, it's, it is Bob Iger's problem. It's Disney's problem. Yeah. I mean, they they basically decimated the, the MCU over the course of the last couple of years, and uh, you know, people just lost interest. In, in the Marvels, I think, because again, you know, our, our son went to go see it with his friend and he said it wasn't the worst thing ever, uh, but it's just like, it was one of those things where it was a huge ask. You had to have watched all the other Disney plus yeah. shows and people were just tired of the MCU because it's just going in this direction that people don't want it to go They're in. They're calling it MCU for a reason. It's going MCU. Not that you can't have strong female characters that lead movies. That's not the problem. The problem is, you know, like when you have a lot of dudes, you know, teamed up or even an ensemble ensemble cast teamed up, it's about the, the, the characters themselves and about them working together and stuff. When you have these other movies, it's about, because it's women. Do we mention women? Yes, Queen Slay, women. And it's not the same thing. You don't even promote it the same way. I can't wait for the Sailor Moon sequel where all the Sailor Scouts die and Tuxedo Mask and his buddies from college take over. Right, because that's, you know... <laughs> You know, I'm just like, I just, you know, they keep acting like they just invented it yesterday. I mean, I said this before, they keep acting like they invented strong female characters and diversity in the last few years. And that's not true. Um, but here's, yeah, it says the box office has nothing to do with me. I'm happy with the finished product and the people that I care about enjoyed the film. It's genuinely a good time watching this movie. And that's all we could ask for these films. Wait, here's what she says, too. It has superheroes. It takes place in space. It's not that deep. It's about teamwork and sisterhood. It's a fun movie. And that's just it. It's, it. I'm not happy I can share it with people. I think it's it, it, it's not that deep. Exactly. I think that's part of the problem. Not that it has to be deep, but it was just, I don't know. I think it's too quirky. But Squeaking said at least Brie Larson doesn't act like a ca cardboard cutout of Brie Larson in this film. Yeah, I think that um, th they also got pretty desperate toward the end. I mean, that last trailer, they were trying to sell it like this was the follow-up to Endgame. You had to go see 
this movie because it's, you know, and it's like, and it really had nothing to do with any of that. You know, they showed all the member berries, all the, the dead Avengers and, and Thanos and all that. And they're like, yes, now it, the story continues with, you know, cats and jokes. And mm-hmm. yeah, like that, that right there said that they knew it was not going to do that well. Cause they're like, well, if we could just trick people, if we could trick people into thinking it was a follow up to end game. We can get them in the theater, you know, but it's not that deep. It's got cats, space cats right. and stuff. And again, you had to watch all the Disney plus shows, to even know what the hell is going on. I think that's what hurt Dr. Strange was people were like, Hey, there's uh, Scarlet witch, except she wasn't actually Scarlet witch mm-hmm. yet. When last time I saw her and now she's evil and there's kids in something like what the hell is going on? You know, what the hell is going on? I feel like I missed something. Yeah. Like, did I miss a movie? No, you missed the show. You had to watch. And people don't like that. You know, they, they don't like that. Um, so I just, I don't know, guys. This is this is like catastrophic. And then there there's talk that uh, Secret Wars now, they're, they're going to course, cor- quote unquote, course correct and switch Kang out for Doctor Doom. Which I, I really, I don't even know how they're going to pull that off. Like we haven't introduced the fantastic four yet. We don't have Dr. Doom cast and we have oh. a movie called the Kang dynasty. Well, but... Didn't the director just leave that the guy that was supposed to be in charge of that just left. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, there's a whole thing going on with that. I just, I don't know. I'm sorry. I was just thinking back to the, 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 the kid, you know, Mon Valoni. And I was just like thinking about how much I just like her. Sorry. I was well, distracted. Yeah, Paul Tassi said that she's she's actually the, one of the best things in the MCU. Um, she's the best cast MCU hero since Tony Stark. Yeah, but the thing is, people don't care about the character. That's the problem. The problem is, it doesn't matter how well cast she is and how awesome she is. I just think she's a sweetie, and I just want to give her a hug. It doesn't matter. Uh, the fact of the matter is that they don't. No one knows who the character is, and they've tried to make it stick multiple times, and nobody cares. I, I feel bad because she is basically going to have to pay for all the baggage. Yeah. That comes with the Ms. Marvel character, you know? And um, and then she's also going to be like, her and Brie Larson are going to be the face of, you know, Marvel failure. And she might not get more opportunities because this this movie. I bombed. don't think so. Because I think everybody just genuinely likes her. Like, I mean, even if you don't like the movie, they like her. So I'm hoping that works to her favor. Well, I'm talking, I'm talking like even outside of Marvel. I know, I'm saying yeah. that. I'm yeah. saying, I, that's what I mean. I'm she's, hoping it works to her favor because people are keep saying she, and all the, a lot of the reviews, they keep saying she's the bright spot. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't think it's going to hurt her in the long run. I just hope she doesn't get like, yeah, like pigeonholed as, as MCU. But I don't think it's going to hurt her. Well, she, she's, it would be really interesting to see where she's at and where uh, Rachel Zegler are in five years. Mm-hmm. You know? They might do a, a Freaky Friday switch up in terms of uh, where you know how how uh, castable they are. Yeah. So we're gonna wrap this one up. Yes. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.